The first Songkran substitute holidays have been decided on. The defunct Virgin Airlines will fly again. The Americans have come to the rescue. Thailand is lifting its travel bans and now letting certain people into the country. Man arrested for shooting a wild elephant and killing it. Hello, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories coming up. The Thai government approves the first of Songkran substitute holidays. The government on Tuesday declared July the 27th as a substitute day of the cancelled Thai New Year holiday of Songkran. Government spokeswoman Naramon Pinyasanawat said the decision was made by the cabinet today. The festival, held annually and recognised as public holiday from April the 13th to the 15th, was postponed this year due to the stress of the Chinese coronavirus infection. Despite Songkran's reputation as a water festival, there is no mention of any water fight parades and other related festivities to be held on the substitute Songkran day off. Large gatherings will likely remain banned throughout July under the emergency degree, which was extended for the third time today. During the 27th, it sits between two holidays, Sunday and Tuesday, July the 20th, which celebrates His Majesty the King's birthday, effectively turning the Songkran substitute holiday into a long weekend. The spokeswoman did not say when the two cancelled Songkran holidays left in the quota will be spent. It is also unclear whether July the 27th would be considered a bank holiday as well. The Bank of Thailand is said to be deliberating on the matter as we speak. Virgin Australia will fly again under a new US ownership. Yes, Virgin Australia went to receivership and yes, may be rescued by an American company. Virgin Australia will reportedly grace the Australian skies again after US company has bought its out. Main capital of a private equity group in the US took over ownership after the struggling airline was unsuccessful in asking for Australian government for a bailout or a loan. The second largest airline in Australia collapsed in April after struggling with long-term debt before the Chinese coronavirus pandemic struck, knocking them out of the skies altogether. Bain Capital reportedly supports the airline's current management team and its turnaround plans and saying it's committed to retaining thousands of jobs by injecting a significant amount of money to secure its future. The Australian government is undoubtedly breathing a sigh of relief along with other airline officials as the US company has saved the airline from the government having to put its hands in its pockets and worse a Qantas monopoly. When state borders reopen, both Qantas and Virgin Australia could possibly engage in a price war, as domestic flights will likely be in demand, as Australia is in its first recession in almost 30 years due to the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. Virgin Australia is currently owned by a number of shareholders, including Sir Richard Branson, Singapore Airlines, the UAE government, and China's HNA Airlines. The airline started up in 2000, just before the collapse of the other big airline brand at the time, Ansett, and quickly became Australia's second largest airline brand to continue to share the Australian skies with Qantas. <laughs> Thailand to lift bans on international flights for some foreign travellers. The ban on international flights will be lifted, but some travel restrictions will be maintained for disease control and prevention, the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand announced. Chila Sakamanop, Director General of the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand, the aviation regular issued the announcement to lift the ban on international flights under some conditions. Now, despite the lifting of the ban, travel restrictions remain, despite the lifting of the ban, travel restrictions remain in place as the Chinese coronavirus situation is still severe in some countries. The announcement came after the Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration yesterday approved some foreign travellers to the country, including business travellers, foreigners with spouses, work permit or residents in the country. Foreign travellers who are allowed to enter the kingdom also include those with needs for medical treatment in Thailand, students of Thai educational institutions, as well as their parents. 
Other groups are individuals in diplomatic missions, international organizations, and foreign government agents working in Thailand. <laughs> foreign government agents working in Thailand? As well as their spouses and children, who are approved by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and permitted under special arrangements with foreign countries. Incoming travellers are required to comply with disease control rules in accordance with the capacity of Thai authorities in conducting greening processes and providing them quarantine facilities. Thailand opens for foreigners with the residence permit and spouse children with citizenship. The fifth phase easing of lockdown measures will allow several groups of international travellers to enter Thailand. Starting July 1st, the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand has announced that the ban on international flights will be partly lifted while not completely ending the country's airspace limits. Though the ban on international flights will be partly lifted, some restrictions in international arrivals will remain in force under the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand's rules and regulations. Aircraft must receive authorization from the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand before taking off and landing. They include government or military aircraft. Aircraft making emergency landings and aircraft making technical stops with all passengers remaining on board. The Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand's announcement also authorises humanitarian aid, medical relief flights, repatriation flights and freighter flights. The fifth phase easing will allow six additional foreign travel groups to enter. They include spouses, and children of those who have already been permitted to enter Thailand, foreigners with residence permit in the country, foreigners whose spouse and children are Thai citizens, patients seeking medical treatment for some diseases, school and university students and their guardians, and guests of the government, investors and experts. The six groups can choose to stay in alternative state quarantine or hotels that have cooperated with hospitals to look after those who have been placed in quarantine. The ASQ facilities are able to look after 200 people a day. The people are required to pay all relative expenses during the 14 day quarantine period. Initially, the government will grant permission to travelers from Japan, South Korea, Singapore, China and Hong Kong. If they plan to visit the country for two to three days, they have to strictly follow all recommendations of the health authorities. Man arrested for killing a wild elephant in southern Thailand. A wild elephant was shot and killed by a local at a national park in southern Thailand, Prichap Akari Khan, over the weekend. Police arrested the alleged shooter who is now facing charges of killing a protected animal and possessing an unlicensed firearm. Kuriburi and National Park officials fourth wild elephant this month that has died from either electrocution or gunshots. There are about 300 wild elephants in the park and local officials say they've been trying to prevent clashes between locals and the wild elephants. On Saturday, park rangers were trying to lure an elephant that was roaming in local rubber plantations back into the forest when it was allegedly shot by 49-year-old Narong Aprakati. Rangers rushed over when they heard the gunshot, finding the two-ton elephant dead in a ditch and a 49-year-old man with a shotgun in his hands. He claimed he was acting in self-defense. Prime Minister Priyat Chinacha received medical supplies from China and both countries agreed to jointly revive their economies after the 2019 Chinese coronavirus alleviates. Government spokesman Niramon Pinyawanasawat said Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat received 
the donation from acting Chinese ambassador to Thailand, Yang Xin. It comprised of 1.3 million surgical masks, 70,000 N95 masks, 150,000 Chinese coronavirus test kits, and 70,000 personal protective equipment, PPE suits. Prime Minister Priyata Chinachat expressed gratitude for the donation and for Chinese facilitating facilitating for Thailand's procurement of medical and medicine supplies. He said that was significant for Chinese coronavirus control in Thailand and reflected good bilateral ties. Besides, he expressed his condolences on the flooding in many provinces in China. But he did not mention Thailand's drought due to the damming of the Mekong River. The acting Chinese ambassador praised Thailand for its effective Chinese coronavirus control, which resulted in the period of without a local infection cast for over 30 days. He also said that despite the Chinese coronavirus crisis, both countries enjoyed good relations and maintained bilateral trade. He promised to promote good ties between the two countries. Both sides agreed to help each other revive their economies through trade, investments and tourism after the Chinese coronavirus subsides. And yes, promised to promote good ties. You can't beat a good tie in the land of smiles, can you? Plans to reopen five islands to foreign tourists by August. Next month, five of Thailand's major tourist islands may open up to foreign travellers. Phuket, Koh Phi Phi, Koh Samui, Koh Pangan, and Koh Tao are getting ready for potential visitors from overseas. A small number to start as the borders are slowly prized open. While a trip to Thailand's islands may sound nice, after months of lockdown, officials may limit the trips to a so-called villa quarantine, where visitors would only be allowed to stay at their accommodation and not travel around. Officials are planning to allow foreigners to enter the countries starting August the 1st, but only if they are part of the travel bubble scheme, which involves countries powering up in agreement to allow travel between them. Now, such agreements are reportedly only in the works for those nations that are deemed low risk for spreading the coronavirus. The number of tourists visiting the islands may also be limited, with numbers depending on each area's capabilities to effectively screen visitors, they said. We expect residents in these areas to agree to the move We expect residents in these areas to agree to the move because Phuket relies on tourism revenue when it takes into account the province's cross-domestic product. So basically you'll get off the plane and you'll sit in your condo or villa for two weeks quarantine on an island. 